Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and today we're out at the Pomona Fairplex where we're gonna shoot one of the two car events we do out of the year. We shoot SEMA every year, and we shoot Grand National Roadster Show because for me, this really is the granddaddy of them all. It's where America's Most Beautiful Roadster is awarded, the Amber Award. It's where the Sloniker Award is given out, plus a bunch of other ones. So what we'll do is give you our normal overview of the show, try to give you a flavor of everything, and you gotta know our focus is gonna be on the pro touring and resto mod cars as always. So let's go inside and take a look. You know, I'm not a big one on going to shows, as I said at the very beginning here, but for me, SEMA and Grand National Roadster Show are two must-see shows every single year. And what I like about Grand National is, again, like SEMA, I get to see a lot of my friends that I don't get to see often. Got to see Mike Ring and his wife Nancy uh, from the Ring Brothers. You know, friends like Steve Strope and friends like Jimmy Shine and all these. I, I get to see a lot of my friends there, Sean Smith. But I like that it's where SEMA, you have so much going on that's not necessarily relevant to what I love and what we show here on the channel. And Grand National Roadster Show has a ton of it at just the highest levels out there. So obviously the, the number one push of the Grand National Roadster Show is picking the Amber Award, America's Most Beautiful Roadster. And we got to see early as the cars were being loaded in and pulling up for judging, we got to see them kind of up close and personal without a big crowd, which was really cool. And then you just walk around and, and you've got you know, a building with a bunch of low riders in it. And I mean, like, you know these things have never been driven before because there's way too much detail going on. But stunning work, the etching, the painting, really incredible. Over in Building 9, I thought it was really neat that they dedicated the entire building to trucks. We had some of our friends in there, the Matrangas, our buddy Jason, um, Jason Scudelari with his, his powder blue F100. And it was just loaded up with trucks. But for me, where the heart of the show is at, just for my personal taste in cars, is Building 4, where a portion of the building is committed to the amber cars, but around that you have a ton of pro touring and resto mod cars. And again, over in Building 6, where the Sloniker cars are, you have some amazing muscle cars over there. And speaking of Building 6, our friend Roger from Ironworks Customs up in Bakersfield had a 67 Mustang out there that I've been hearing about and he's been showing me pictures of and sooner or later we're gonna shoot a video on this car. But what an exceptional 67 Mustang. I mean, when you think about how many times that car's been done and to still find an original yet beautiful, classy approach to a 67, I absolutely love the car, love it. I love the, the rear section of this car is beautiful. The lower valance, the spoiler up front, the rockers. It's just a really exceptional car. When you jump over to building four, one of my favorite cars that I saw at SEMA was back at Grand National Roadster Show. And at SEMA, I never got to hear this thing run. It's the one from the Ring Brothers uh, called Enyo, which started as a 48 farm truck, ran into a Formula One car, and it turned into this. But it was so cool to get to finally hear this thing rolling and rumbling through Building 4 on setup day. Mike Ring came rolling in and it was just awesome, man. I absolutely love what they did with this truck. And I know a lot of people don't love what they've done here. In my opinion, personally, I gotta say, I think this goes over a lot of people's heads because it's such a next level build, the amount of technology that they employed to bring this vehicle together. So yeah, I'm blown away by the Ring Brothers and yo, absolutely love it. Now right by Enyo was my buddy, Sean Smith, Great pal of mine, automotive designer. I think, you know, pretty much the best in the hot rod pro touring resto mod world, for me anyhow. And Sean had a couple cars on display that he didn't build, he's the designer on though. Kevin Hart's 
all carbon fiber, Hellraiser was there, which is just a stunningly beautiful car. Sean had his hand in a good portion of the design on this vehicle. And then one I've heard him talking about for a while with these young builders out of Arizona called Driven Speed Shop. He's been telling me about, but hasn't shown me anything on this knockout 69 Camaro. I mean, the, this in my opinion is the difference between building a car and starting with design and then building a car. And I love that these younger builders, the Driven Speed Shop guys, let Sean take the lead on creating what they were then forced to build, which is a design that is impeccable. And when you look at the renderings and you see the vehicle itself, they really did follow a lot of it. The rocker treatment on it, the engine bay, the interior of this thing. I mean, just every single thing. And I'm not big on light interiors, but the light against the dark, against the silver, the color of the wheels, just a truly exceptional car, man. That one really knocked me out. And then right up in that same front row was a just a radically cool Chevelle from the Roadster Shop guys, set on a really cool display so you can see the underside of the car and see how much they've they've done to you know take it from what it was to what you'd actually want to drive down the road fast and spin tires really radical. Another standout car for me, and I mean, this one's probably, at this point, it's a little early to know, but it's probably gonna win the Sloniker is my bet, is the car from Andy Leach and Cal Auto Creations, this crazy 1960 Buick that almost looks like, oh, it was just restored and painted and looks really beautiful. Meanwhile, you have no concept of just how much is done to this vehicle. And I love the way that they displayed it across from their booth. They designed their entire booth to look like you're sitting in a design studio for this vehicle. The drafting table, the big logo of Invicta across the back. Stunning car. I won't be surprised at all if this is the Sloniker winner. Speaking of the Sloniker winner, as well as Amber and all the other awards that'll go out this weekend, I wanna say a massive congratulations to everyone that even makes it in to compete, let alone all the other vehicles that are there just to simply be shown. And you know, what it takes to get a vehicle to the Grand National Roadster Show in any of the buildings is a feat in itself. So I say congratulations to all of you guys. For me, I'm not big on car shows because it's kind of boring to me to watch cars just sit there and look pretty. And yet the Grand National Roadster Show is one I have to go to every year because the team that brings it together, in my opinion, completely knocks it out of the park. A big thanks to the guys that actually take the time on the team that put together what we know as the Grand National Roadster Show because it is truly one of the finest shows you could ever go to in our country. I'm excited to make some announcements that I'm gonna hold on to for a minute, but they're coming. There's a lot of cool stuff staying the same here, but there's a lot of stuff changing on the channel that we're all really super excited about. So as always, you guys, a huge thanks for hanging and watching what we do, and I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.